Good morning, folks. A lot to cover today on a lot of different topics, including time, weather, space, planets, and more. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours on the sun, we're mostly quiet. We do have that significant coronal hole system on the south, we're awaiting its solar wind, and with the Saturn alignment ongoing, those two make for an earthquake watch. We're also keeping our eyes on the south, active region incoming as you can see it arching over the limb near the 8 o'clock position. Solar wind is super quiet. Not only is the plasma stream in calm range, but check out that stability on the KP index green bars. Folks, the Stromboli volcano erupted again. Gorgeous webcam shot of the event here. It was a relatively small eruption despite its nearly unlimited visual splendor. We're off to the hurricane season outlook and the water gives them a bit of pause at the moment. Heat in the Atlantic and the Gulf foretell a stronger season even though we've seen few events so far this year. The waters are hotter in the Atlantic, but we also have a La Nina pattern brewing in the East Pacific, something else that means a potentially stronger season to come. Temperature anomaly maps show the difference in the water temperatures there on either side of South America. Up next, we're looking up. It's one of the topics most at this channel despise, modifications of the meteorological conditions, geoengineering enthusiastic crowd in this one. Their mentioning of the concerns belies not their pipe dreams of megafunding to work the skies with harmful substances. Boo. Jumping out next to Venus, our sister planet has a secret beneath all those clouds and might be part of what helps to make them. Volcanoes. They say numerous volcanoes are active on Venus right now, ongoing plume activity, as if it didn't already have a dynamic enough atmosphere. We'll step out next to Mars. The Arab world's first shot at the red planet has launched. It will be February 2021 before it arrives, if it can get there, and they hope to learn more about why it has lost its atmosphere. Interesting visualization up next. They are trying to figure out how these dwarf galaxies, which are so obviously dark matter deficient, have come about. Now a far cry from our universe circuit disconnected hypothesis, they want the dark matter to be stripped during high velocity collisions. Despite the different direction on the highway, the key here is to remember that these galaxies challenge the formation paradigm and the dark matter paradigm. And in general, the pursuit of answers to those questions not only has merit, but it solidifies the need to keep searching for the rest of the field. A quick stop to look back in time at the history of Earth. They are suggesting there was only a 15% chance of us still being here today, not just in this form, but in any form. Thus far, the risks have been natural and species competitive. Now, apparently we're a major problem to ourselves as well. And speaking of time, what is time? Is it a constant background rail running through space? Is it an oscillation that shifts relative to light? While those answers remain utterly elusive, they are figuring out that if we do have a fundamental unit of time, it must be insanely small. They are finding that a billion trillion trillion ticks every second is about the limit of possibility, and frankly, when it comes to oscillations like that, we have to let our minds go to the music of the spheres, the shaking and vibration that forms and commands the energy fields of the universe to coalesce into matter we recognize, all on the fourth dimension passing by and through our perception, potentially trillions of times every instant. Coming down the stretch back to Earth here, we are seeing the underground geodesy machine kick into gear. It can detect rotation and tilt changes of the Earth down to minute degrees, something as small as 50 feet of motion in the axis and polar position. Likely not a bad device to have set up given our recent examinations and our less rosy expectations of the future. And last but not least, nice climate note on the decadal predictability of NAO. It helps to have a major known decadal modulation of NAO like solar activity already well established, the factors that they say drive the shift in NAO are all also controlled by solar activity, and their long-term oscillations seem to match a 44-year cycle, nice harmonic of the complete solar magnetic cycle. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about how the sun controls various aspects of weather, seismicity, your health, and human technology. Plus, learn about super flares, the Earth's ongoing magnetic pole shift, and the recurrent solar micronova in Chapter 8. Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is at spaceweathernews.com slash publications. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. B-52.
Be safe, everyone.